Welcome to Croft in North Yorkshire for the penultimate meeting of the season for the 2017 BRSCC Mazda MX-5 Super Cup. It's Tom Roach and Luke Herbert at the top of the table battling for the championship and they also start on the front row of the Good for Race 1. So as I hand you over to race commentator Andy McEwen, Andy, answer me this. Tom Roach on pole, Luke Herbert on the front row of the grid. It's a wet track and it's a long run to turn one. What's going to happen this time? Over to you. Well, Scott, there is definitely potential for some fireworks, isn't there? Because, as you can see here, just 14 points separate the two in Luke Herbert's favour. Everyone else pretty much out of the equation now as far as the championship itself is concerned. They're all fighting over the minor placings very hard indeed, though. But yes, uh, Tom Roach knows, really, that he has to start beating Luke Herbert. There are only six races to go, and 14 points is actually a fairly sizable margin. Here's the rest of the grid, then. As we said, Roach from Herbert on row one. Nick Dunn and Liam Murphy share row two, ahead of Tom Collins and the reigning champ, James Blake Ball on row three. Jack Harding and Johnny Greensmith make up the fourth row of the grid, while Sam Tatler and Aidan Hills round out the top ten. Then it's Simon Baldwin and Brian Chandler, always goes well in the wet, ahead of Colin Weissout and Nathan Bell. Jake Bailey and Alec Livesley on row eight. Row nine for Simon Orange and Darren Stapleton and Richard Wickland and Carl Garnett round out the top twenty. Then it's Simon Fleet and Jeff Gurrier, Ashley Boyles and Alex King on the twelfth row of the grid. Hizar El Chamar makes his debut, former Porsche racer ahead of Gary Townsend. Then Jeremy Crook, John Stack, George Grant and Alex Miller, Duncan Harris, Jim Hart and Ian McDonnell round out the capacity 33 car grid. So wet conditions now. Remember, last time we had wet conditions at Anglesey, it was Tom Roach who very much proved to be the master of those slippery conditions. Is that going to be the case here in Yorkshire? We're ready to go racing for the first time of three this weekend at Croft. The red lights go on. They go out now. Away we go. Who makes the best start from the front row of the grid? Looks pretty good from Roach. Further back looks uh, like a good start as well for Jonathan Greensmith in car number two. But yes, Roach pulling clear down towards the first corner. Herbert slots through into second place. Third, I think, is going to be the number one car of James Blake. Baldwin and then Liam Murphy gets sideways on the outside line he's off into the gravel trap oh no Liam Murphy and he is not happy with that whether there was contact I couldn't quite see but Liam Murphy in the gravel at turn one and going no further Clerbo almost always catches someone out on the first lap and sadly this time around it is Liam Murphy remember Liam third in the points coming into this weekend still had a mathematical chance of taking the title but more importantly that really hurts his chances now of hanging on to that third place uh, Johnny Greensmith and Jack Harding are not that far behind back down the back straight we go towards tower now this is also a very treacherous part of the circuit when it's wet because it's very bumpy in the braking zone water tends to collect in the bumps you can see there sam uh, sorry carl garner excuse me the number 19 car just behind us slithering and sliding his way through and then they're into the jim clark s's and we're making a move here in fact up the inside of aiden hills there nice move made aiden's car now aiden i think was involved in some way with liam murphy wasn't he murphy spun and aiden was definitely held up in it all and looks like he's sustained some bodywork damage as well now through Barcroft into Sunny in and out. That is the 66 car of Sam Tatler and Simon Baldwin going up the inside of him. Nice move made there. Then the number 17 car next in line uh, also trying to take advantage of that. We're on board indeed with that number 17 car making its way uh, out of the uh, sunny out corner. Nick Dunn, that is, who started a very impressive third, but has slipped backwards slightly on the opening lap. There's Johnny Greensmith, who we saw make a decent launch off the line, but then also, I think, was held up by the Liam Murphy spin as the leading contenders make their way through the complex for the first time. It looks as though Tom Roach is very much getting away. And look at that battle for second place. It just off in the distance, we saw uh, James Blake Baldwin diving up the inside of Luke Herbert at the hairpin. It's a great overtaking opportunity. Did he make it stick? Looked like Herbert was trying to fight back as they made their way across the start finish line for the first time yes there they are wheel to wheel this is for second place the uh, blue and yellow car on the inside is James Blake Baldwin trying to take second place away from Luke Herbert he breaks desperately late on the outside line but can't quite get into the corner first so through will go the reigning champion the outgoing champion we have to now say James Blake Baldwin and Johnny Greensmith also goes around the outside of Luke Herbert the grip in the wet remember is on the outside of the track not on the traditional racing line and so uh, Johnny Greensmith demonstrating that absolutely perfectly then so down to fourth for Luke Herbert. He's immediately fighting back though, draws alongside the number two car, the former Porsche champion on the way down towards Tower. Now, as I said, traditionally, if you're trying to overtake into Tower, you'd be on the inside line, but in the wet, the outside might just be where the momentum is. Well, actually, Luke had the move made really before they turned into the corner, so he's back into third, but you can already see the green car of Tom Roach escaping up the road. A huge lead that Tom has built up thanks to a good start, good confidence in the wet, and also all of the fighting going on behind him. So, question now becomes whether any of this lock can close back in. Jack Harding is the car at the back of this quartet. Johnny Greensmith coming back up the inside of Luke Herbert into Barcroft. That is a brave place to try and overtake and Johnny realising I think that in these conditions in particular 
that maybe wasn't the most sensible of moves. They are continuing to hold each other up though, this little group of four. Some more cars are closing in behind, aren't they? Uh, Tom Collins looks to be one of those making ground and uh, they make their way down towards us. And Simon Baldwin also in there, car number 16. So it's now almost becoming a six-way fight for second place, all happening way off behind Tom Roach, the race leader. Now remember, there are 100 points available for a race win, plus a point for the fastest lap. So if Tom Roach could take maximum points in this race and Luke Herbert would finish in fourth, that would be a five-point swing. And all of a sudden, that 14-point advantage that Luke enjoys coming into this race starts to come down. That is, of course, including drop scores as well. So uh, if either of them have a particularly bad race, that could change things as far as drop scores are concerned. But right now, they're both on the podium, so that won't come into play. Back down into Clairvaux they go. Again, you can see no one really bothering with the apex there. This is Nick Dunn, who's slowly catching back up to Sam Tatler, but that's not the way to catch up. He runs out wide, and Richard Wickland takes advantage as Dunn goes through the gravel trap. Wickland and, in fact, Brian Chandler both diving through. Chandler there, the silver and purple car, just ahead of Richard Wickland. Both trying to make progress from just outside the top ten earlier on in the race. There is Tom Roach, the Blandini car, a familiar sight this in the wet, uh, pulling away out in front of the rest of the field. Then it is Blake Baldwin second, Herbert third, Greensmith fourth, Harding fifth, then sixth place there uh, going through is Tom Collins. This then is the battle we've just been watching between uh, Brian Chandler, Richard Wickland and Nick Dunn trying to recover from his moment. They're all chasing after the blue and yellow car of Sam Tatler, number 66, who started just inside the top ten. Ninth on the grid was Sam. We're on board now with Chandler through the left and right. Jim Clark S is flat out in the dry. Probably not that much uh, slower in the wet, to be honest, in these cars. Plenty of grip through there, even in the slippery conditions. And then through Barcroft, very little runoff area you can see here at Croft. And up the inside, nice move made there by Chandler up the inside of Tatler. But Tatler now fights back into the uh, second part of Sunny, uh, but he can't quite get through. So Chandler does go ahead. Another place gain for Brian. Started this race 12th. He's already inside the top 10. And now Sam Tatler uh, turns onto the defensive because he's got Richard Wickland trying to uh, follow Chandler through. Couldn't quite make the move into the complex though, but uh, if you can just find a slightly grippier line through these tight corners, you can make a big, big gain into the hairpin up in front of them. It looked as though Jack Harding was making a move as Richard Wickland also makes a move and does go past Sam Tatler. Made that look remarkably easy, actually, didn't he? So through he goes. Uh, Tom Collins there, losing a place to Brian Chandler, who I said would go well in the wet, and he really is going well, isn't he? Carving his way through the field. That's three places gained in one lap for Brian Chandler, and he's not done yet. He's now trying to find a way past the number 16 car ahead of him uh, of Simon Baldwin, who slithers out a bit wide, and Chandler almost sensed the opportunity to get up the inside into Hawthorne opted out of that one. It all run right up to and indeed over the exterior limit of the circuit there, trying to find a bit of grip and then flick it right and left through the chicane, avoid the tyre stacks on the uh, the apexes of the corners. On board with Nick Dunn at the tail end of what is becoming an increasingly lively train of cars this, isn't it? Down in towards tower again. It's, it is still raining, but not particularly heavily. The trouble is that uh, the amount of rain that was put down pre-race, uh, we're not going to see a dry line emerging, I don't think, before the end of the race. And as you can see, there's still some pretty big, dark clouds looming overhead. So Nick Dunn still trying to find a way past Sam Tatler here as we head in towards the Jim Clark S's. There is Simon Baldwin still ahead of uh, Brian Chandler, if anything, getting away from him slightly now as they head through the, the far end of the circuit where the rain is coming down very heavily again. So uh, different conditions at different parts of the circuit. And it's through the high speed stuff where the rain seems to be the heaviest, which is just what the drivers don't want to see. Tom Collins there slithering his way through. Got to be careful to avoid the curbs, avoid the grass. There's no tarmac runoff area on this part of the circuit, as we see at some other racetracks in the UK. If you get a wheel off wide here, you're on the grass, and that will give you zero adhesion in these conditions. Back down through the complex, there's Wickland turning his way through. Richard Wickland not in the top ten in points after some penalties early on. Oh, and that's Sam Tatler off the road fairly well off the road isn't he and you can see there just how slippery the grass is there was no traction at all look at how heavy the rain is getting that may well have had something to do with Sam Tatler's uh, off-track excursion then it is catching people out left right and centre you can see that uh, uh, in fight for what was second place it's now really a fight for third isn't it because James Blake Baldwin is getting away from Luke Herbert but how hard dare you push in these conditions because they're worsening by the second 
and all it takes is for you to arrive at a corner that a lap ago had a decent amount of grip and find that all of a sudden there's an awful lot more standing water on the road and it could catch you out and send you off the track altogether so drivers having to be very very careful and very precise with their steering and throttle and brake inputs as well so as not to um, make the car work too hard and end up slipping off the road so there's Roach still leading the way Blake Baldwin I'd say is closing the gap marginally but maybe not quite enough to mount a serious challenge just yet then Herbert in third greets with him fourth with a wheel over the white line then into tower which was brave he's trying to get the widest possible run through there to get all of the grip that he can and carry all the momentum possible down towards the Jim Clark S's. Still sits in fourth place though. Jack Harding still fifth, despite looking menacing earlier on. He's now actually got Simon Baldwin closer to him than he is to the two cars in front of him. So Simon Baldwin with a really impressive race here at uh, Croft. Has run well in past Mark 1 MX5s in the wet as Simon. So again, not a huge surprise to see him towards the sharp end. In towards the second part of Sunny they go. Far from Sunny at that part of the circuit at the moment and much you can see collecting off-road we didn't notice whether Sam Tatler did get going again from uh, his grassy excursion down at this corner here the entrance to the complex let's see is Sam's car still there no looks to have recovered it eventually but right down towards the tail end of the field back through in towards the hairpin we go great overtaking opportunity this one it's difficult to defend as well because you tend to run wide on the exit but you can see that Brian Chandler has made a move up the inside of Simon Baldwin Baldwin fighting back on the exit though just about finds some grip and traction they'll run side by side down to Clairvaux but I think that Simon Baldwin should just be about be able to hang on Welcome back to the final lap of race number one here for the Master MX-5 Super Cup at a very wet and treacherous Croft circuit. Not that that has bothered this man. Tom Roach is looking good for another race victory and to close the margin on his championship rival Luke Herbert fairly considerably, I'd say. Heading out of uh, the chicane down towards Tower, he has a very comfortable race lead. He also has the fastest lap of the race, which was set just before the rain started coming down really heavily. So I'd imagine that will stand to the end of the race. In the background, though, you can see that whilst we've been away, Luke Herbert has made his way through into second place and Jack Harding third. So where has James Blake Baldwin gone? Um, it looks as though he's lost a few places actually. I think Johnny Greensmith's gone through as well. So Blake Baldwin must have been caught out by the slippery conditions and slipped off the road somewhere. Now that is bad news for Tom Roach because it means that whilst he was looking to take five points out of Luke Herbert's championship lead, he's now only going to take three points out of him. 100 points for a race win, plus the one point for fastest lap. Well, second place pays 98 points, so the gap will come down slightly. It will be now 11 points between the two of them, provided they finish where they are in about half a lap's time. But at least things are going the right way for Tom Roach, and there are still five races to go this season after this one. Two more this weekend, and three at uh, Donington Park, and that always throws up some pretty spicy racing. So uh, down into the complex for the final time comes the Blendini uh, machine of Tom Roach. And it's been a pretty flawless drive. Got a brilliant jump off the line and just sort of escaped all of the battling that was going on behind him in the early stages. There is Greensmith, there is Harding. They're both now ahead of um, James Blake Baldwin, who's down to fifth. So whatever happened to James, it's cost him any chance of a podium finish. Through the final corner they go there. There's Greensmith ahead of Harding. But the race victory is going to go the way of Tom Roach. And he is going to extend his championship lead. Race win for Tom Roach. Second place will go the way of Luke Herbert. Third for Johnny Greensmith. Fourth, Jack Harding. And fifth place there, fairly distant fifth place, is James Blake Baldwin. Then it's Tom Collins and Richard Wicklin. Nick Dunn next in line. Brian Chandler didn't quite close in on that group in the end with Nathan. Nathan Bell rounding out the top 10. Confirmation there of your result. Only eight laps completed because of the very slippery conditions, but it is Roach from Herbert. 3.6 seconds to the margin. Uh, 11 points now the difference in the championship. Simon Baldwin dropped to 11th ahead of Carl Garnett, Colin Bysow, Simon Orange and Gary, Gary Townsend rounding out the top 15. Jake Bailey uh, and Ian McDonald were a couple of the non-finishers. Uh, we also uh, had a couple of others that didn't quite make it to the end of the race. Liam Murphy was saw off at the start. Jim Hart as well uh, didn't actually start the race. Naden Hills was excluded for contact during the race. Well, Tom, given the weather, I think rather than four wheels and engine, he's more like a rudder and some sails out there. It was that wet. Yeah, it did get wet towards the end, didn't it? I mean, it almost dried after a few laps. It was, and it was one of those races beforehand where look, everybody's just staring at the sky, wondering what it's going to do. Um, we guessed it would probably be wet. Kind of went a fairly wet setup, and um, yeah, I was glad to see the rain came down halfway through because we might have struggled if it uh, had carried on drying. 
It did look as though, as I was going to say, the car looked really strong in those adverse conditions. Yeah, yeah, the car felt great. Massive thanks to the boys at Blendini and Oku's looking after the car this weekend because the car was great to drive. I just uh, was up to me not to crash it. So you'll be doing a rain dance for tomorrow then? Yes, please, Maureen. <laughs> well done, great job. Thanks. Well, Luke, an important second place, but uh, I think not the conditions you wanted, was it? No, I mean, after, you know, after Angles, it was the first, first time we've driven this car in the wet. You know, we knew Tom, Tom, Tom is strong in the wet. Um, he's strong in the dry, but he's just got that extra edge in the wet. I don't, I don't know where he's finding it. Um, so, yeah, when it was raining before the race, his plan was we've got a gap in the championship, which you've got to maintain. I can, I can just about sit behind Tom as long as he doesn't get too many faster slaps and still win. So um, I think we need a couple of dry races tomorrow. Uh, and, um, and I think, you know, I've got a slight, even though I didn't get pole in qualifying, I think I've got a slight edge on Tom in the dry, going from testing. Um, so, so fingers crossed it's dry, but it was, you know, a good race. I mean, James Blake Baldwin was up there, Johnny was up there. So uh, in terms of a, an exciting race, it was, it was hard work, but just not the people, I, you know, I didn't need to be, I needed to beat Tom and couldn't quite do it. But Johnny, maybe slightly unexpected third place, but a podium's a podium. Yeah, it has been a, a bit rare this year actually for podiums, uh, so I'm quite happy we're, we're third, especially when uh, I saw James coming off like that. I thought, well, I'll just stick where I am. I wasn't going to try and pass Luke to make sure he was just too dodgy out there. It was just unbelievable, so just wanted that podium. You're one of the drivers that seems to like the wet, because of course your first win came last year in conditions not too dissimilar to this. Yeah, I, to believe it or not, I hate the rain, absolutely hate it, um, so I'd rather it to be dry tomorrow, so yeah. <laughs> It's third for race two. If it is dry, what can you do from there? Uh, if we've got the same pace as what we've got in wet, I think we, we should be there and thereabouts to Mercia. I'm not going to really get mixed with Tom and Luke to Mercia because they're too far in front of me and I'm not going to upset any of them to Mercia. So, yeah, hopefully it's going to be a nice, uh, dry and clean race. Fingers crossed. Well done. Yeah, cheers. Thank you. Well, as you can see behind me, a fantastically stacked paddock full of MX-5 Super Cup cars are ready for race two here at Croft on Sunday afternoon. And thankfully, the weather's a bit better. It's also quite cloudy, but hopefully the rain should stay away. So let's head over to the grid, and here's Andy for the full lineup for race two. Thank you very much, Scott. They line up for this one, the way in which they finished race number one. So it will be Roach and Herbert back on the front row of the grid, but in the slightly drier conditions, this may well suit Luke a little bit better than in race one. So Roach and Herbert row one, Greensmith and Harding row two. Those two remember battling away for fourth place in the championship. Blake Baldwin is fifth alongside Tom Collins on the third row. Richard Wickland and Nick Dunn make up row four. Then it's Brian Chandler and Nathan Bell. Simon Baldwin won to watch four again. He was really quick in race one ahead of Carl Garnett. Then Colin Bysouth, Simon Orange, Gary Townsend and Darren Stapleton on row number eight. Row nine of the grid for Alec Livesley and Ashley Boyles. Row 10, Alex King and Jeff Gurrier. Then it's Simon Fleet and Jeremy Crook. With Sam Tatler, who went off, of course, early on, but should move up from 23rd, alongside George Grant, the series sponsor, on row 12. Row 13 for John Stack and Nazar El Chamar, who enjoyed his first Mazda MX-5 race in race one. Then it's Alex Miller, Duncan Harris, Jake Bailey, and then in the retirements from race one, Ian McDonald, Liam Murphy, who really should make good progress, and Aidan Hills was disqualified for contact in the first race, will be working his way through from 33rd on the grid. There is still rain in the air, as you can probably see. Just a few little drops falling, so the conditions are going to be ever-changing, I think, over the course of the next 20 minutes. But that will not affect this championship battle between Tom Roach and Luke Herbert. They're going to give it their all. Luke won't want to lose any more points to Tom Roach. And it all starts now as they get away in racing for the second time here this weekend. The run down towards Turn 1 looks like Luke Herbert is very much going with Tom Roach this time around. In fact, he's ahead. Luke Herbert's got the lead away as they drop down into Clervaux for the first time. So it's Herbert from Roach from Greensmith, the top three cars. Fourth place, just about Jack Harding with Blake Baldwin next. And then I think Brian Chandler. Do they all get safely through? Jeff Gurrier gets two wheels in the dirt. So too does Alex Miller. But Yes, they are all through uh, cleanly. No repeat of Liam Murphy's race one off. On board now with Colin Bysouth. As we turn our way through the chicane, that's Tom Collins getting very sideways in front of us. The track is more or less dry. It's a bit greasy maybe, but as you can see from Collins' windscreen, there is definitely rain falling, albeit nowhere near as heavily as it was in race one. Up the inside we go. That was a nice move made there uh, under braking for Tower Corner. The next target, Carl Garnett in the grey and orange car just in front of us. And then by the looks of it, the white car of Nick Dunn. Leaders through the Jim Clark S's. Herbert leads then. Roach second, Harding third, Blake Baldwin fourth, then Greensmith fifth, Chandler sixth, then it's Wickland and Dunn seventh and eighth. So it's the same sort of protagonists at the uh, the front of the field as we saw in race one. But in the drier conditions, they should be able to stay a bit closer together. The speeds are up, the slipstream effect is therefore a little bit more noticeable. 
we should see some more classic Mazda MX-5 racing in this one. Two wheels on the dirt there for Richard Wickland. The grass is still very wet indeed. Down in towards the complex we go, and it looks like a three-car breakaway developing at the front of the field, doesn't it? With Herbert, Roach and Harden getting away slightly from the chasing pack. There's Brian Chandler, who pulled off some brilliant overtakes in race one. He's going for another one here up the inside of uh, Johnny Greensmith, who left him a bit of space, but he wasn't quite sure whether Chandler was going to commit to the move fully. Into the hairpin, they stay in the same order. They stay single file for the time being. Up in front, oh, Jack Harding has taken second place. Look, the white car of Jack Harding has moved ahead of uh, Tom Roach, the man who's second in the championship. So Jack Harding and Johnny Greensmith, they came into this weekend just five points apart, battling over fourth place in the championship. And of course, Greensmith extended that margin in race one. But now Harding's got a few cars between himself uh, and uh, his big rival for that place in the championship. So, however, he runs very wide there through Hawthorne, and that is too wide. So uh, Roach, I think, will get back up the inside and more than likely take the place away again in towards the chicane on board with Nick Dunn as we turn through the chicane now more and more water falling on the windscreen now you can see the rain definitely getting heavier that's probably what caught um, uh, Jack Harding out well no actually Jack has held on to second place looks so he found a gap back in the traffic and just about stays ahead of the race one winner the AK automotive driver staying in front but look what's happening at the very front of the field Luke Herbert is getting away just as Roach did in race one Luke has got the lead and he's pulled that crucial gap he's broken the toe and with the fighting being quite this intense for second place they're holding each other up and they're letting the leader go Roach can't can't afford to lose any more points to Herbert here. He took those three valuable championship points away from the championship leader in race one. He does not want to give them back. Oh, very sideways. Never Corey by South. We're on the grass. By South through Barcroft corner. The tyre wall is looming. And somehow he avoids it. Wow. Well, it was a full 360 degree spin for Colin by South and a new pair of underwear required, but that could have been an awful lot worse. That looked like it was going to be a very sizable shunt indeed. I made the comment in race one about how there is very little runoff at that part of the circuit. If you go off, you're likely going to make uh, pretty serious contact with the tyre wall and Colin by South was lucky not to do so. Now, the rain is definitely worsening now at, this, at the end of this lap, and you can see the effect this is having on Luke Herbert. Look, it spooked him slightly. It's gone beyond psychological rain, though, now. This is proper rain. This is definitely going to start affecting the uh, levels of grip on the circuit. And so you can see how much slower they're having to go, how much more tentative they are on the brakes in towards Clairvaux. They're starting to flirt with some wet racing lines now. Side by side here, though, Brian Chandler around the outside of Richard Wickland. That was a nice move. Again, in the wet, the grip is on the outside of the track, and Chandler now will try and drive right around the outside of Johnny Greensmith. That was a bit optimistic, even by Brian's standards, I think, there. Ah, the safety car is being called for. We know not why. There must be a car off in a, uh, a dangerous position. So any advantage that Luke Herbert did have is now going to be eradicated and the whole field will bunch back together again. Welcome back to Croft. The safety car has returned to the pit lane. We're away and racing once more in uh, race number two of the weekend for the Master of X5 Super Cup. Luke Herbert, the championship leader, has the race lead. Jack Harding is in second and Tom Roach in third. Those three made a pretty good restart there. The rain that was causing a bit of drama just before the safety car came out has died down a bit. So if it stays like this, the track will certainly stop getting any wetter. It might start drying out slightly. Good battle here between uh, Gary Townsend in the yellow 223 car and uh, just ahead of it in Darren Stapleton making his first appearance of the season. Just behind him is Alex King in the number 35 car. These two did battle at uh, Anglesey earlier on in the season as well. But the leading trio make their way down towards Tower Corner. The next trio of cars are James Blake Baldwin. Oh dear, and that was Johnny Greensmith. Johnny Greensmith off the road. What happened then? There was contact between Johnny and another car, and there he is in the tyre wall. So... Big drama there for Johnny Greensmith, and that has big ramifications as far as his fight with Jack Harding for uh, fourth in the championship goes. There's quite extensive damage done to the right-hand side of that car. Uh, and you can see the dent in the rear left corner. That was where the initial contact was made. I didn't spot who it was that was uh, behind Greensmith. It was another grey car. It might have possibly been Richard Wickland. There is Richard just skating out wide and uh, Brian Chandler going through. Now, is there any damage to the number 76 car? Any telltale sign that there might have been contact with the front right corner? Yes. Uh, sorry, no, excuse me. Brian Chandler is the one who has the damage. So that might be a clue. So apologies to Richard. He appears to be innocent in all of this, but Brian Chandler possibly getting involved in a bit of rough and tumble down at Tower Corner. And uh, unfortunately, Johnny Greensmith has come off the worst there. So drama straight off the restart, but at least Johnny's been able to rejoin and there is no need for a further safety car. 
back out of the hairpin they go. And the leaders already arriving down at Clairvaux once more in uh, the second half now of this second race of the weekend. Nick Dunn here challenging uh, Tom Collins in the grey and fluorescent yellow number 20 car. Nick Dunn who had a bit of a gravelly moment earlier on today right here at Clairvaux but then who hasn't it's a very tricky corner even in the dry and as you can see the rain is now hammering down once more so uh, I don't think there is much chance of getting a full dry racetrack again before the end of this one at least back through the chicane goes Nick Dunn and looks like Tom Collins is actually closing in slightly on Richard Wickland in front of us isn't he up through the gears we go down in towards the braking zone at Tower Corner and defensive lines being taken in front of us so Nick Dunn turns his way through the right, first of two right-hands, excuse me, at the Sunny in and out complex. Brian Chandler now coming under quite a lot of pressure here from Tom Collins. Down towards the complex he goes, and Collins has a little look at the inside. Backed out of it, though, it's surprisingly difficult to overtake into that left-hander. Through the right-hander here, you can make some moves, but really, if you're going to overtake through the complex, the hairpin, the final part of the complex, is the place to do so. They're all sort of jockeying for position, but they stay in the same order, vaguely single file this time around. Back out of the hairpin, across the start finish line they go. Tom Collins with his windscreen wipers working hard. Now this is for the race lead, so somewhere along the line, Tom Roach has got back into second place ahead of Jack Harding. And look, as it's getting wetter, Tom Roach, the rainmaster, is closing right in on Luke Herbert. So battle is rejoined between the two championship contenders. 11 points between them coming into this race in Herbert's favour. It would do Tom the world of good to try and find a way through. And you can see why he's going quickly. These are perfect. Tom Roach conditions. It's getting very, very treacherous indeed out there. Not to say that Luke Herbert can't drive in the wet. He's a very able driver in all conditions, but there is something special about Tom Roach and a wet racetrack, and they just seem to mix particularly well, don't they? Whether it's just his driving style or the setup of the car, the car certainly seems less twitchy, doesn't it, than uh, the race leader's car through Tower Corner. Either way, Tom Roach certainly coming into his element now towards the end of the race, through the Jim Clark S's, down towards Barcroft they go. They're both starting to struggle for rear end grip it seems but neither of them want to back down because they both know how important this could be there are two points difference between finishing first and second in one of these races doesn't sound like much but when the margin between them and the championship is so small it can make all the difference uh, interestingly by the way Luke Herbert set the fastest lap earlier on on lap two and of course the conditions are now far worse therefore that's not likely to be beaten Roach having a look up the inside having a big look there side by side almost in towards the complex there Herbert finds the traction on the outside line though this is a titanic duel between the two um, dominant drivers in the season really this year others have come and gone and won the odd race and got the odd podium but it's been these two all season long battling for the championship lead and now they're battling for the race lead Herbert's all out of shape through the hairpin Roach was trying to apply the pressure and get up the inside but he couldn't quite do it back across the start finish line they go down towards Clairvaux once again and Luke Herbert just about hanging on there is lots of, uh, of uh, cheering going on and encouragement being given to the drivers from the pit wall there Herbert very deep into the first corner just trying to find some grip on the outside. He's actually getting back away from Roach now, so Tom just needs to try and regroup. But you can see there through Hawthorne, visibly quicker into the corner, carries that speed all the way through into the chicane, and then that helps him all the way down the back straight in towards Tower, which is one of the best overtaking opportunities on the circuit. Herbert again is squirrely out of the chicane. They're dropping Jack Harding in third place now, aren't they? So it looks like it's going to be one of these two barring no incidents that will uh, take the victory but which one is yet to be decided and that is particularly important they finish as they are now and then effectively Luke Herbert redresses what happened in race one he lost three points to Roach in the first race he'll gain those three points back if he wins this one so they'll be back at 14 points between the two of them then still not exactly a comfortable margin for Luke but uh, it's better than 11 isn't it this though is where Roach really closed in on the previous lap looking towards Barcroft and Sunny skating around under braking in towards the right-hander two right-handers at uh, Sunny the first one there you can see slightly banked the second one has a bit of camber to it but not quite as much and now it does seem that Herbert's getting away and again you can see that the rain has died down so it's really interesting to see this isn't it how different conditions drastically suit different drivers Roach is now only just able to keep up with Luke Herbert who's been really got a second wind here hasn't he towards the end of this um, second race of the weekend Tom working away feverishly uh, behind the wheel into the hairpin he goes back out onto the pitch straight takes a nice wide line in clips the late apex carries as much speed across the start finish line as he can 
Green screen wiper still working backwards and forwards. More for spray than rain, I think, now, though, as the last lap ball is hung over the pit wall. So, one more lap for Tom Roach to try and close in on Luke Herbert. This could prove to be a really important win, a pivotal win, you could say, for either one of these two. For Herbert, he would extend the margin in the championship back to what it was coming into this weekend. For Roach, he will get the gap underneath two point, uh, underneath 10 points for the first time in a long, long time. Through the chicane, and Tom is closing back in. Oh, and Herbert again, very twitchy out of the chicane. The rear of his car does not seem quite as stable as the rear of Tom Roach's Blendini machine. Down into tower they come. No need to defend, though, for Luke Herbert. So he carries the wide line again into the corner. Yeah, so SRC Recycling Limited backed machine. Makes its way back out of tower and up towards the Jim Clark S's. Roach is a bit more ominous on this lap, though, isn't he? You can never count out Tom Roach. If there's a race win on the cards, regardless of the championship situation, he will go for it. And he's had a really nice run there through the Jim Clark S's. He's close through Barcroft. This is not an overtaking opportunity, but the next corner at Tower is. And he's right there, and he's looking to the inside. He's trying to put the pressure on Luke Herbert and maybe force him into a mistake. It's a nice wide line there for Roach. He's going to carry good momentum out through the second part of, of uh, Sunny. There are three corners left, and if your name is Tom Roach, you can probably overtake at any one of them, but he's not close enough into the first one. He's really just trying to apply pressure, force Luke Herbert into maybe just snatching a break, running a bit wide, taking the wrong line. That's all it would take for Roach to find a way through. One more corner to go, and it surely is going to require a bit of defensive work here from Herbert. No, he takes a nice wide line into the corner, then chops across aggressively to the apex, runs a bit deep as a result, but I think he's going to do enough to hang on. It is a very hard fought win and a crucial one indeed for Luke Herbert. Luke Herbert re-extends his championship lead with a masterful bit of defensive driving here in the wet at Croft. He's pretty pleased with that as well. Tom Roach comes home second. The gap is back out to 14 points between the two of them. Uh, third place, a fairly distant third. And the end goes the way of Jack Harding, by the way, with Brian Chandler fourth and James Blake Baldwin in fifth. Tom Collins is sixth, Nick Dunn is seventh. Richard Wickham will be eighth, I believe. Then Simon Orange and Carl Kahn and Luke Herbert celebrating in style, though, after what was a marvellous victory. So Herbert wins the race by only three tenths of a second, but that matters little. He takes three points out of Tom Roach in second. Harding does indeed round out the podium. Brian Chandler in fourth place. Outside the top ten, Simon Baldwin gets an 11th place finish ahead of Jake Bailey and Darren Stapleton, who impressed in that one. Liam Murphy from the back of the grid to 14th, and Aidan Hills, likewise, made it as high as 50th place in the end. Zariel Jamal there in uh, 26th place. Jeff Gurrier down in 30th. We lost in McDonald and Alec Lipsley. And Jim Hart, unfortunately, did not make the start. Well, Luke, I know you prefer the dry conditions, but uh, you managed to somehow master the wet conditions there. Yeah, I, I think we had uh, half a straight dry, which gave me the uh, <laughs> gave me the edge off the line. I managed to get in the lead, which is what I needed to do. And as soon as we got around the first corner, it started to spit and rain. Uh, so wipers were straight on, and it just yeah got wetter and wetter and wetter. Luckily... Jack made a uh, move and got through to second, so it held Tom back a bit. Um, and it just let me get that little gap I needed, then battling. Um, I mean, Tom was so much quicker. I think it took him one lap to, to close six car links gaps. So, um, you know, he's driving great, but in the wet, it's even harder to overtake. Because if you go offline, then you're either going to hit someone or go off the track. So, um, no, he drove a good race, but I'm, you know, I'm really pleased to win that, especially as it was wet. That's crucial because you've taken one apiece so far this weekend, so it's uh, battle lines drawn for race three. Yeah, a win each and a fastest lap each, so um, so yeah, so the outcome of the weekend comes in the third race. So just fingers crossed it's dry. <laughs> yeah, well done, great drive. Thank you very much. Well, Tom, we know you love the wet conditions, but uh, just missed out on the win, but uh, you gave Luke a really good run in the end. Yeah, it was my own fault. I uh, I got wheel spin off the line in the start of the race, and yeah, once you're behind, it's uh, it's always going to be difficult. Uh, Car felt good in the in the rain, you know. I was, uh, was confident I could be quicker, but it's, there's only one line, you know. And Luke, Luke drove really well. He, I kept willing a mistake, but he just didn't put a foot wrong at all. Um, yeah, so he drove really and deserved it. And the front row again for race three. Yeah, yeah. So I think that's that's one each now this weekend, which uh, was not the plan at all. I mean, I'm uh, I'm quite a bit behind in the championship now. So, uh, but still four races to go. See what happens. Jack, a very hard fought third place, but uh, for a while they looked like looked like you're on course for second. Yeah, at the start it was dry. Um, I knew I needed to get through them because I knew our pace was quick. Um, yesterday we qualified seventh in the dry, but if we'd have got our lap in, I think we were supposed to be on pole by two tenths, so we was unlucky. Um, yeah, so the start got past Johnny quite quickly, and then made a move on Tom at the hairpin, made that stick, and I thought, here we go. Now I might be able to race for the win, and then it started to rain, the heavens open. So, uh, yeah, I'm getting better in the wet, but it's still not my strongest point. But, you know, to come on with the podium, I'm really happy with that.
all set for the third race of the weekend at Croft here for the MX-5 Super Cup and thankfully the sun's come out so thankfully we should get some proper dry racing and a really exciting spectacle too. Here's Andy one final time with a full grid for race three. Yes, thank you very much, Scott. Although, of course, we saw the conditions improve at the start of race two, only for the, the rain to come back with a vengeance. So we'll wait and see what happens this time. Once more, we start race three the way we finished the previous race. So it's Herbert ahead of Roach on the front row this time around. Jack Harding is now fourth in the championship and closing in rapidly on Liam Murphy for third. So watch for him to try and get another good result alongside Chandler on row two. Blake Baldwin, Collins, Dunn and Wickland next in line. Then it's Simon Orange and Carl Garnett. Simon Baldwin looking for a top ten alongside Jake Bailey on row six. Then it's Darren Stapleton and the mentioned Liam Murphy with work to do from row seven. Aidan Hills likewise from row eight ahead of Gary Townsend, then Ashley Boyles and Johnny Greensmith 18th after his off in race two. We'll be looking to gain ground from there. Rounding out the top 20 are Sam Tatler and Nathan Bell, both of whom have had dramas already this weekend. Then Alex King, Colin Bysam, Jeremy Crook and George Grant rounding out the top 12 rows of the grid. It's another packed grid. We are down to 32 uh, cars this round, time around though because we um, have not got the uh, 27 machine out there of Jim Hart this time around. He, remember, hasn't started either race so far today and will not start this one either. So, Herbert versus Roach. The gap is now back out to what it was when we started the weekend. 14 points between the two of them. We're away in racing for the final time on what is still a damp track here at Croft. It's certainly not dried out yet, but if the rain stays away and the sun stays out, it could dry out by the end of the race. Leaders wheel to wheel down to Clairvaux. Herbert on the inside, Roach on the outside line. Where's the grip going to be? Certainly Roach is later on the brakes. He carries good speed through the corner and goes through. Brian Chandler is through into third place there. Look, and a spin further back. Oh, and it's all gone wrong. That, I'm afraid, <laughs> is the number 44 car, which has had a bit of a moment a big spin in the middle of the pack that's Darren Stapleton and there are cars off everywhere that is Alex King involved and uh, looked as though there were five cars in total Simon Fleet was one of them as well embedded in the gravel trap at Clairvaux that will at the very minimum I would imagine re require a safety car that's the problem when you've got 32 cars bearing down on the first corner here at Crofton it all funnels down into Clairvaux they all want the same piece of track contacts almost inevitable if someone spins in the middle of the pack it will cause chaos leaders have survived though so all of the main protagonists are still there one of the questions I was asking was whether Liam Murphy was involved in that and I have to say I haven't seen him come through yet so he may have been delayed this is Simon Orange backing away down towards the right hander at Barcroft with Jake Bailey behind him then Simon Baldwin as they turn their way now into Sunny then Rich Wickland who's also been delayed in that by the looks of it and Tom Collins too so it was Darren Stapleton that spun initially and then just got collected by the rest of the pack really no major damage done just lots of cars stuck in the gravel trap down into the complex we come for the first time and there is James Blake Baldwin, uh, just behind Brian Chandler, who's attacking Luke Herbert. So Roach has got the lead again. Oh, there's more drama further back now as well. That looks as though it might be Jake Bailey off the road. And then contact nearly there between Wickland and uh, Simon Baldwin. It's all kicked off here at the start of race three, hasn't it? The safety car is being called for. That's no big surprise as a result of the, well, this, basically. We've got cars off everywhere. Who else is involved? George Grant, by the looks of it, is one of the cars uh, off the road. I can't quite see the car that's parked in just behind him. We've wheeled out the way now. Now, ah, it's car number nine, uh, which is Alec Livesley from the back of the grid. So Livesley, King, Grant and Stapleton look to be the four non-finishers. So Simon Fleet rejoined. He was involved in that. The order then, Roach from Herbert from Chandler, the top three. Blake Baldwin fourth, Harding fifth, Nick Dunn is sixth. And Johnny Greensmith there in seventh. Simon Orange into the top ten with a really, really uh, good run here so far today. And everyone else filing through as well. So the safety car will be in this time. Tom Roach weaving left and right to try and warm the tyres up. Also to try and keep Luke Herbert guessing as to when he's going to step on the loud pedal and try to pull away. Now remember, all weekend long, the wetter the track has been, the more it suited Tom Roach. The drier, the more it suited Luke Herbert. Well, this is probably the driest it's been pretty much since the start of race two. So we'll wait and see who it favours. We are back, under, back up to speed. Tom Roach has accelerated the field. However, they're not allowed to overtake until they cross the start-finish line, which doesn't really explain why Brian Chandler is defending quite so heavily into the final corner because James Blake Walden can't overtake him yet out of the final corner they come once they cross the start finish line then they can resume racing the top two already getting away here looks so Roach versus Herbert once more is the battle at the front of the field the green flags wave and immediately Chandler, Chandler under pressure here for third place James Blake Baldwin trying to get to the inside of him down towards Clairvaux did he make that one stick they're leaning on each other slightly oh Chandler sideways off into the dirt that was all a bit unnecessary he goes rally crossing he's sideways back across the track 
almost collected by Jack Harding, but then Chandler in, in true Brian Chandler form turns an almighty moment into a possible overtake. He's on the inside into the chicane. He loses the rear of the car again, and Chandler has to straight line the corner now. Does he lose a place to Harding as a result? I don't think he did. Deep breath, everyone. There are the leading two. Roach ahead of Herbert. Blake Baldwin is third. Chandler, remarkably, is still fourth. But here comes Harding up the inside down towards Tower Corner, and I think he's going to go through. So Jack Harding will gain a place, but uh, my word, Brian Chandler, you can never accuse him of being dull, can you? Brian is always in the thick of the action, always thoroughly exciting to watch. That car is never pointing in a straight line. He's always got the car uh, at, at uh, pretty spectacular angles. He's one of the most spectacular drivers to watch, is Brian Chandler, and that was pretty spectacular indeed. He's down to fifth place, but at least he's still going. Nick Dunn is sixth, Greensmith is seventh. Now, remember, Greensmith and Harding are battling over fourth place in the championship. Harding has moved ahead after the previous race. So Greensmith looking to try and redress that situation if possible. They are both, though, taking big points out of Liam Murphy this weekend. When they came into the weekend, they were nearly 50 points behind Liam in third in the championship. But Liam's uh, non-finish in race one and then starting to the back of the grid, he made it as high as 14th in race two, but that still wasn't very many points. So he is losing ground here to the uh, the cars around him in the championship. He's now definitely out of contention for the overall title, is Liam. He's desperately now trying to salvage third place. Oh, Chandler back up the inside of Jack Harding, and there's more contact through the final turn. Well, Brian Chandler's car is not going to have a straight panel left on it, is it, at the end of the, this race? He's been dishing out and receiving contact left, right and centre here as we're on to the final lap of the race. So that fairly lengthy safety car period means that this is, unfortunately, all the racing we're going to get in in race three. And Tom Roach looks to have done enough for me to pull away from Luke Herbert here slightly. Now, at the moment, Tom Roach has the fastest lap as well, which would be enough for him to close that championship lead back down to 11 points, as he did in race one. But, of course, with the track conditions ever improving, there's every chance that fastest lap could actually be set this time around. So we'll wait and see. Roach leading the way. Herbert in second position. And they both got clean air as well. It could come down to this fastest lap point come the end of the week, the end of the season, of course. Three more races at Donington Park next time out will decide the outcome of the championship championship between these two. But whether it's Roach or Herbert, we'll await to be seen. Back out of Tower Corner they go. These two look fairly stable at the front of the field. Blake Baldwin in third, though, has got Jack Harding uh, looming large in his mirrors. And Brian Chandler is never far away from the action. He's not far back either in fifth but the leaders turn their way out through Barcroft now and in towards Sonny and Tom Roach pushing on here. He knows how important this fastest lap point is. Turns his way through Sonny, all looking fairly neat and tidy between the two of them and the gap between the two cars certainly isn't shrinking massively, but it's not going out massively either. I'd say they're both lapping pretty evenly here. So Tom Roach down into the final corner and turns his way through the complex for the final time. The Blandini car already with a race win to its credit this weekend in race one. Herbert then got that race win back again in race two. The gap went back out to 14 points. It looks as though it's going to come down in this race. The question is by how much Tom Roach turns his way out of the final corner. He will see the chequered flag, but I'm watching for the lap times. Is he going to be quick enough to take the fastest lap point away? He crosses the line. He sets the fastest lap of the race. Can Herbert beat him? Yes, by two one hundredths of a second. So Roach wins the race, but Herbert gets the fastest lap, which means that Roach will only take a single point out of it. So the gap will not be 11 points, it will be 13 points between them. So Roach leads the way, Herbert in second place, but that vital championship point that was decided by just a couple of hundredths of a second. Uh, third place will go the way of uh, Luke James Blake Baldwin, fourth Jack Hardy and fifth Brian Chandler. Then it's Nick Dunn, Johnny Reeves with Tom Collins, Richard Wickland and Simon Baldwin rounds out the top 10. And uh, as far as retirements were concerned for that race, um, the three drivers we saw off in the gravel at the start of the race did not make it to the finish, of course. Jeremy Crook, uh, Brian, uh, sorry, uh, Alex King, Darren Stapleton and George Grant were the three non-finishers. So here is confirmation of the points then. 13 points in it. Three races to go. It is all still to play for. Liam Murphy, though, look, is now not that far ahead of Jack Harding and Johnny Greensmith. That's a lovely three-way fight for third place that's also developing going into the final rounds. Well, Tom, I think that's the best way to end the weekend. A victory there in uh, slightly easier conditions this time. Yeah, it was... Um, in some ways, though, it's more difficult because it's drying. You know, so you never quite know how hard to push. Um, I mean, there's a lot of it behind the safety car, which is... The, uh, yeah, the only time is when you don't mind the safety car is when you're in the lead because <laughs> it's the easiest lead ever. Um, yeah, and it was just like a two-lap sprint at the end. But um, 
Luke was quick. I was glad to see the checkered flag because he caught me on the last lap and he got past the slap. So, but never mind. Now, bear in mind we've been here twice before, so you go back into next the next one at uh, Donington in the championship hunt again. Surely three times the charm. Yeah, I think if uh, if Luke's just consistent at uh, Donington, it's his. Um, but it's three races, you know. Who knows? One bad result and it totally changes things. Um, so hey, nothing to lose. If never say never. Exactly. Well, Luke, two seconds and a win. That's a very solid weekend towards your title aspirations. Yeah, for a um, for a wet weekend uh, with Tom, that's a, you know I'm really happy with that just to get the one win uh, away from him in the wet. You know I couldn't have asked for better really. And um, in that last race, I think I got the fastest lap, and fastest laps count for one point. So that's a critical. That could be a critical one point um, in the third race at Donington. It, you know it may or, you know may, may or may not win me the championship. And as, as you say, battle lines drawn for Donington. It's you and Tom now down to the wire. So. Uh, it's going to be tense. Yeah, I think it's going to be the same at Donington. Me and Tom are going to be, you know, up on the front row of the grid. Um, but yeah, I'm just praying for a, for a, for a dry weekend. Um, but just compared to everyone else in the wet, we're not too bad. So I'm in a position now with 13 points in the championship where I can sit behind Tom and um, and let him let him try and win the races and, and just take second places. As long as I don't come further back than second, then I, then I can take the title. As we know, it's never a time to get complacent, though. No, no. Um, of experience from Mazda's racing it for this is my fourth year now that that everything can change in one race um, so we'll see but uh, it makes it exciting for the last round it does well great weekend and best of luck and we'll see you there thank you very much cheers well, James good to have you back on the podium third place another strong drive for you now the car's back on form we've had a uh, rather um, uh, unsuccessful at points weekend but uh, hugely successful in others um, entirely my fault in the first race for uh, uh, lobbing it off um, uh, but we got a podium in the end and, and I just want to say thanks to Blink Motorsport they've done an amazing job in, in bringing the car on each time we've learned more and more I think it's said to you that character building is the best way to sum up your year I guess you get to go to Donaldson just really have some fun and enjoy yourself well yeah I mean uh, Donington will uh, be interesting we'll, you know we're looking for a win uh, as always but uh, I figure if we use all of our bad luck up this year next year will be better and of course I think you wouldn't hurt to be the cat amongst the pigeons when it comes to the title battle in, in some way absolutely 